So this is cool solution architecture I can say. So there are a lot of things covered here. I will cover one by one and what is the use of these things. So we'll start from this left bottom. Basically I'm going to use chat GPT and Python code and VS code so that it can send those information here. Why I'm using chat GPT here is basically I just want you to show that you don't need to depend on the data here. I know when since the Power BI launch, many of you have asked about I need the data, I need the data, right? To practice for yourself. But now with the help of chat GPT, even with a free version, you can easily able to generate certain script based on your prompt. And I will also show you how you can ask the prompt so that you can generate the data in the Python and use as a CSV file also, or you can also send directly to Azure IoT Hub. So we are going to cover all those things, interesting things uh, in this video series. I highly recommend you to continue this series and also share this video with others and also like this video. So it requires a lot of effort in order to build this kind of series here. So basically the Visual Studio code, it actually sent this information uh, to IoT devices and from there we can build this IoT hub and it actually sent those information using real time hub which is basically in fabric. As you can see it actually comes under fabric here and now after this one, uh, real time, so let me take this laser here. All right, this looks good. So this is the IoT devices where we have and then we have IoT hub and it's going through real time hub. And after that it sends into two different directions. So from real time hub we can configure this one where there is a event house and you can go to KQL database or you can also configure this using data activator here. So first we'll look for this the top one which is you can store the data into data I mean which is the event house and from that you can configure this to be KQL database table and I have made a separate video series about KQL if I haven't watched it I highly recommend you to go and watch that one because it can help you in future reporting purpose and from this KQL DB it actually connect directly into Power BI and we can monitor this real time the story doesn't end here because so far what we have talked about this is itself we have the device configured in Azure and then we can load it into this fabric and KQL database directly with this report in Power BI. That's it. Yeah, it actually solves the purpose. But if you look into the larger picture, even if you want to implement this into a company, that actually requires a lot of other things. So that is what we have covered here. So first thing here is the pipeline, which I added here and it is connecting to notebook, which is Apache Spark notebook. And in to that, we'll have some script. And that actually stores the information from KQL database into this lake house. From KQL database into this lake house here. So what is the reason behind that is KQL is expensive thing, right? You cannot load all your data and historical data into one thing database as well as as it is sending it's every 10 again. If you have hundreds of machines and you want to send into real time information like even within 10 seconds, that is going to be huge amount of the data per day. So you cannot keep all those things. So there is a kind of hot and cold kind of storage. So hot is basically the real time which is happening inside the KQL database. So once it is done, if you are okay, the limitations what you want to keep like seven days or three days or even one month. But the data which is before to that period, you can have to be stored somewhere else so that you can have the monitoring of the historical transaction. So you want to key, copy the data from KQL database and then load it into Lakehouse and then delete those information into KQL. So we can also see that in the video how we are going to cover that. And from this Lakehouse we again connect to Power BI. This is everything in direct query itself. So that we can have a real time data as well as the import mode within this report here. Even the Lakehouse you can also configure as an import mode because that's the beauty of Power BI. It can handle import and direct query at the same time. Now then bottom one which is basically here the event stream here. So whenever there is a threshold we can set up manually what is the threshold for each and every machine. So something goes up and goes down it can also trigger to send an email alert for you, send a team notifications or you can configure custom using a power automate thing. I just use power automate in this one so it can be an advanced one. The power automate can actually send those informations into fabric SQL database. So why I choose here fabric SQL database is because another reason is because as you can see the bottom one we have this ERP systems which is actually exporting the data and dumping into SharePoint as a CSV file and on a daily basis I am taking the production data everything into Fabric SQL database here. So because of this reason I am also dumping this real time thing happening inside of this Fabric SQL so that we can match the production data we can also add these real time things and also we can include the, the technicians activity what is happening how they are performing that. So all these things you can mesh together and then again connect this to Power BI. 
So real time data, historical data, as well as this ERP data, everything can be combined into Power BI. So look at still. So that's what the demo which I have showcased over there. Some of them are from ERP, some of them are real time, and some of them are historical data. So all these three things can be merged together into Power BI. Yeah, this is what Power BI, and from here it goes to Power Automate for this save, and it's writing it back to the SQL. So this is how this real time flow works here. This is how cool, amazing, right? So let me know in the comment section below what you feel about all these things here. So it has taken a lot of effort in order to build this one. I am really excited to show you about how these things work and we will try to continue on this video series here. So thank you so much for watching this till this end. Um, so if you like this video and if you want to continue this series please let me know in the comment section below. Share this video with others like this and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet and see you in the next video.